Hi, right, what's going on guys? Beatboxblade Slash in here and this is my final Naruto video. With that being said, let's get started. Today is the day we bring up the final Naruto video commentary, and here I have with me my father. Say hi. Hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, and we're here to just simply talk about Naruto over the years, just all this time watching Naruto, getting into Naruto. So our first topic would be how we got into it. And I remember when I was younger, there used to be a, a channel called Toonami. It was really old. It came on like every Saturday and uh, sometimes Friday, and Naruto would play. And my older brothers got into it, and I decided to pick it up. And it just really, it, just, it was just really good. I watched it, I'm like, whoa, ninjas, because I was like six at the time. <laughs> and I just thought, wow, this is, this is something. And being the dad... I always tried to monitor what the kids were watching. And so whenever they would watch some new show, I would decide to sit down and watch it with them so I could figure out, make sure that what they were watching was actually, you know, acceptable and decent and things <laughs> like that. So as they, they sat down and started watching shows, I'd watch, I'd watch it with them. When they got into Pokemon, I got into Pokemon. When they got into Digimon, I got into Digimon, you know. So then all of a sudden this Naruto thing came along that I saw them watching and, you know, being a, a child of the seventies and Kung Fu theater, martial arts has always been a favorite thing of mine. <laughs> and, uh, so when I'm seeing this cartoon with these ninjas doing crazy things, I always thought it was pretty interesting, even though I didn't fully get into it right away, but it was pretty intriguing. It was something that I really liked. And it wasn't until years later when this guy, <laughs> <laughs> reintroduced it to me and I started watching it and getting into it. And it's just been, it's been a, a, an awesome thing. I just, I talk about it. I reference it whenever I'm out in public, if people get tired of it, yeah. things like that. Me and him will go into public places and do hand signs. <laughs> yeah, hand signs, summoning jutsu and, <laughs> and the chidori. It okay. takes a lot of time actually to, not a lot of time. It takes some time to actually learn the hand signs yeah. and be able to do it fluently. Especially, well, I'm not going to say especially Chidori, but I remember me and uh, my friends, one of my friends from school, we would both know, we both knew Chidori, and we would, like, stand at opposite sides of the hallway and just, like, do the hand seals. If we saw each other from a distance, we'd do it and literally run at each other <laughs> and just see what would happen. <laughs> now, here's what's crazy. I actually worked at a middle school. And I had students who were really into Naruto. So we would stand around, we'd talk about it. And I had this one kid in particular that we used to do the same thing. We'd see each other from a distance and only I would do the, uh, I'd pretend to do a Rasengan, which doesn't really require hand seals, but I would, you know, do the, the hand motions and use one hand to hold it and the other hand to, to do the, what the shadow clones normally do. And he would do Chidori and we would run at each other and we had like this little game, like we'd have to try and avoid the other person's hit and then <laughs> take whatever we had and hit the other person. And, uh, I remember one time we were in the gym. It was lunchtime or it was recess time actually. And I saw him and he saw me. So we did our Chidori Rasengan thing, ran at each other. I dodged out of the way. He he missed me. And I went, like, swooped my hand around his back, hit him in the back with the Rasengan, and then <laughs> raised my hands up in triumphant victory and was just rejoicing that I had won. Then I turned around and saw him using the cross finger uh, shadow clone uh, sign which basically what he was letting me know was that was just a shadow clone and I actually had only hit one of his shadow clones and not him. And at that point, and that was the first time that he had ever done anything like that or used that. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I just got outsmarted by a seventh grader. <laughs> I'm sure all it was the, a trip. I'm sure all the other teachers must have loved looking at <laughs> Well, actually nobody else saw it. I mean, it was mainly a bunch of kids, you know. Uh, recess time. So it was kids that were looking at it. They would just look and just shake our heads or shake, <laughs> shake their heads. I mean, they just shake their heads and go, Oh, that's just, 
that's, you know, them doing their thing. <laughs> I remember back when uh, it was like my ninth or 10th grade year. That was when I was really into like studying the body's pressure points. I kind of forgot most of them now, but what I would do with my friend uh, Jacob is I'd do the Chidori hand seals and then I'd hit him in one of his pressure points <laughs> just to make it seem more real to me. <laughs> his arm goes limp or something like that. <laughs> So that's how Naruto impacted our lives. We learned how to hurt other people. (laughs) And look look like fools in public place, but we didn't care. (laughs) No, we didn't. (laughs) I was actually at work the other day and was just doing something else, wasn't really thinking, and I started to do some hand signs. And one of the, one of the people that works there is a, a former student and he actually went to school with you and knows you. And he looked at me. As I was doing these hand sighs, and I look back at him, and he just said, like father, like son. <laughs> well, that's okay. I'm cool with that. <laughs> and like most anime, there wouldn't be anything significant about it if there wasn't favorite moments slash characters. I guess I'll start off with my probably one of my favorite moments was when it was only ever shown in Naruto Shippuden like, later on, but when... Minato, the fourth Hokage, the teleportation ninja, or the yellow flash, fought uh, Obito, one of his old students, even though he didn't know it was Obito, and the fact that he was able to outsmart somebody who could appear and disappear when they wanted to in any part of their body, you have to be a really, really quick thinker to be able to do that and know exactly what you're doing, or else you can't do it. Because Obito was able to take down a lot of people. Just not Minato. (laughs) (laughs) I think one of my favorite scenes, one of the first ones that always stands out to me, um, it also happens to be one of my favorite, uh, favorite fights is the, in the tuning exams, the fight between Rock Lee and Gara. I knew you were going to (laughs) say. I love that fight because the, uh, you know, you know that Rock Lee is fast. You know that he's, you know, trained in taijutsu and doesn't use uh, ninjutsu or genjutsu or anything like that. And so, you know, you know that he's this tough little kid, you know, trained by, you know, one of the, you know, prominent jonins of the village. And yet he's going up against this, this major character, Gara, who's like a killer, you know. And so when he fights against him, it's like he's not getting anywhere with him. But then all of a sudden, and this is, this is my main point. This is the, the coolest moment to me. Is when, uh, Guy Sensei tells Rock Lee to take his ankle bracelet things off, his ankle weights. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like super excited. He unbuckles them, takes them off, stands on top of that statue and drops them. And of course they take forever to hit the ground. Yeah. But once they hit the ground, it's like an atomic explosion went <laughs> off and everybody starts freaking out like, how on earth could he have even moved yeah. with those ankle <laughs> weights on? And then, man, once he takes those off, he starts bouncing off the walls. I mean, he is going so fast and starts to put a beating on Gara. <laughs> I mean, his sand couldn't keep up and everybody was just, you know, it was just shocked. And I just, to me, that was one of my favorite moments because it went from, man, I don't know how this battle is going to turn out to, Oh my gosh, Rock Lee is so stinking fast. <laughs> I remember when he took him off and Guy was like, all right, Lee, go. It looked like how fast Lee was. It looked like somebody had taken that clip into editing and just went, and Lee was just gone like that. Right. It was, <laughs> I mean, he was so fast. It was almost like like he was using teleportation. You know, I mean, I think about, okay, so we know that, you know, Shisui Uchiha is considered, you know, the... His, they called him Shisui of the, of the teleportation or the teleporter. Um, and it really wasn't, when you really look into the, the background of the jutsu, it really wasn't a teleportation jutsu. It was really a speed jutsu that made it look like he was teleporting. And in my opinion, that's about how fast Rock Lee was going. I mean, he was going just so fast that it seemed like he was disappearing from one place and reappearing somewhere else. I mean, it was, it was absolutely amazing. Yeah. So fast, in <laughs> fact, again, that as quick as Gara's sand was, it couldn't keep up with him. And then we got, then we got Lee not only being that fast, surprising everybody, and then just giving him more, taking, or taking, yeah, uh, t- turning on the eight gates, well, some of the eight gates, and just, just 
oh, so much to think about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, just the fact that he could do that. And I don't think, now I could be wrong about this, but I don't think they ever even showed, I think that was the only time, or not the only time, but the first time that they had ever even showed anybody opening up any of the gates. Uh, I think that was the first time. I could be uh, wrong about that. I'm not positive. Yeah, I believe it was the first time because the second time we got to see it was when uh, Kakashi was like climbing this mountain because he was going up there to train with Sasuke and he right. opened the first gate. Right. Yeah. Which was cool. That was actually a cool moment in, in itself knowing that <laughs> Kakashi could do it because, you know, uh, Guy and Lee are the only ones that are really credited with it. But Kakashi could do it too. I mean, there was so much Kakashi could do. But anyway, uh, you know, another one of my favorite scenes and... You know, some people might find this a little controversial. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> especially in a in a cartoon, you know, something that was for kids. It was actually for more than kids. But the first time Rockley uses the loopy fist uh, when he accidentally drinks oh, that right. that uh, elixir or whatever from Lady <laughs> Sonate, and he starts Kimi <laughs> right, exactly. And he's using they call it they called it the loopy fist, but it's actually like. Um, I want to say uh, Jackie Chan put out a movie years ago called, uh, or I don't know what it was called, but it had to do with him being a drunken boxer, or drunken fighting, drunken kung fu, whatever. And it was the same type of thing where he had drank some type of alcohol and next thing you know, he's acting like he's drunk, but he's actually more fluid. He's more powerful. And that's basically what Rock Lee was doing. And he was just so like out of his mind, really. <laughs> But he was fighting better against Kimimaro than he was before he actually had that happen. So I thought that was kind of a cool moment. It's kind of sad that didn't that scene didn't really last very long because he was he was well being pretty much drunk everywhere and uh, started to put the whooping on Kimimaro and then Kimimaro like went up a stage with his curse mark and had the bones like stick out of him and like wake Lee up essentially. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but. Uh, overall, I'd probably say my favorite, I already said my favorite moment, but because of that moment, I want to say that my favorite character is, well, the fourth Hokage. I actually thought about making, like, a video about what would I do if I had the flying Raijin, which would be pretty simple with editing nowadays, but to be able to, what would you do if you could tele, if you could place a seal on anything and just teleport to wherever that is and have an unlimited amount? You know, in some ways, I think you'd be a lot like uh, the the movie that came out, A Jumper, the guy who could basically teleport, and he was part of a long line of people who could teleport any place that they had seen, been, or seen before they could teleport to. Um, I think it'd be the same kind of thing. I mean, you wouldn't have any need for a car, right? for a plane. <laughs> I mean, all you have to do is go to some place one time. Put a seal on it. Make sure nobody could take it off. Because <laughs> that would that wouldn't be very good. But I don't think anybody's actually. I don't think anybody's actually able to take off one of Minato's seals. Maybe not. And not only that, but also not only being able to put a uh, a seal on something so that you can teleport there, but also using the daggers that he had. Uh, you mm-hmm. could throw them. I mean, you can literally. I mean, if you timed it right, you could literally fly. With those daggers, you just throw one in the air, teleport to it, and while you're there, you catch it and throw throw it again, and you could you could just keep doing throw it. <laughs> throw yourself basically across the Atlantic Ocean <laughs> and arrive on the other side if you time it just right. But uh, you know, and I'd have to say, hands down, I mean, I have a lot of favorite characters. But I just have to say, Naruto is definitely <laughs> my favorite character for so many reasons. Um, he, you know, his determination and his, you know, his nindo, his ninja way, <laughs> and all of those things. But also his most powerful, what many people say arguably is his most powerful jutsu, and that's the talk no jutsu. <laughs> you knew I was going to say that. You were going to say that. <laughs> but the talk no jutsu, I mean, when you think about it, I mean, he came across so many people. He came across, um, uh, Nagato. Yeah. Well, Nagato, and what was the first guy? Zabuza. <laughs> Zabuza. That's right. <laughs> he came across Zabuza. I mean, Neji in the tuning exams. Nagato in that, you know, in that fight that was there. Obito even. I mean, all of these guys, he was able to talk them into even, even Sasuke really. Yeah. At in the, the very final, final battle. I mean, Sasuke still couldn't figure out 
why Naruto was, was so willing, was willing to go so far to bring him back. And it wasn't the fighting that converted him. It was the talking that converted yeah. him while they're laying there with their arms blown off, bleeding half to death out in the <laughs> rain. They decide to talk <laughs> and Naruto uses his most powerful jutsu after destroying the final valley. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he uses talk no jutsu and actually converts, you know, uh, converts Sasuke. And I think it is just a, such a powerful thing. Oh, and I forgot about Tsunade. He actually, oh, he did. you know, that, that whole thing with Tsunade. So I just, Naruto is hands down my all time favorite character and probably, and just to go back to one of my favorite moments too. Is it is probably one of the most emotion evoking moments as well, <laughs> which I can tell by the look on your face. You know what I'm going to say, but it was the moment that Neji died. <laughs> yeah, I knew you were going to say that because that really showed you the impact of Naruto on somebody. I mean, Neji gave his life not only for his cousin, which was you know Hinata, mm-hmm. but also for Naruto and everything that not that uh, Neji said at the end. Right before he died, he looked at Naruto and he says, Naruto, you've got a, you know, you've got a, a duty. You've got a, a job to do. You've got to protect Hinata, but you've got to protect everybody. Everybody needs you. And he sacrificed, oh my gosh, he sacrificed <laughs> his life to give Naruto the chance to change the world. Nagato did the same thing. I mean, he revert, he did the Rin rebirth and reversed all of the death and destruction, not destruction, but the death that he had just caused and get, sacrificed his own life so that Naruto would have a chance to save <laughs> the world. I mean, what, what kind of character, what character can compare to that? I mean, no matter how powerful Sasuke was, or I know people like Itachi and, and, you know, and everything, and they're all good characters. But nobody had the impact that Naruto did. Of course, that's <laughs> probably why the show was named after him. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, I just, Naruto is definitely my all-time favorite. You know, and then of course, you know, second, third, fourth, and fifth place would probably be, I've always been a Rock Lee fan. Rock Lee was actually my first favorite before I really started liking Naruto. I always liked Rock Lee, and I know I'm gonna get some flack from this, <laughs> from you probably. <laughs> But I really like, or I won't say I really like, they're not one of my favorite characters, but I think people kind of sell 1010 short. I know, I, <laughs> I know. You guys should have seen the look I just gave. <laughs> <laughs> but 1010, 10, 10, 10 has, I mean, first of all, basically, her jutsu is a summoning jutsu. She summons weapons instead of, you know, a creature or of some sort. But she summons weapons and she can do it on cue. Now, there are a lot of other ninjas on Naruto that have more powerful jutsu that are more, you know, that can do a lot of different things. But you have to admit, to be able to summon weapons and use them proficiently, I mean, in the tuning, again, in the tuning exams, 10-10's battle against, uh, who was it, Tamari? Yeah, lasted two seconds. Well, but think <laughs> of Tamari, though, is like a whole other level of ninja. So... It wasn't exactly like they were evenly matched or anything, but I think Ten Ten actually people sell her short. I think she actually is a a pretty good solid character, more so than like Sakura or Eno. Anyway, <laughs> I will give Ten Ten credit that she is always using every second of every time she's she lives. She's always using the summoning jutsu. She is summoning her uselessness. Oh my gosh, are you serious? <laughs> what were they? they were in the sandstorm and she summoned like. This shield, this protector thing. I mean, they would have been done for if it hadn't been for her summoning ability. Okay, you know what? Let's just agree to disagree. Uh, sure, why not? We can agree that Sakura's useless, but but ten ten, I gotta give her her props. I even made a video on it. <laughs> yeah, it was about a forty second video, including the intro and outro and the outro. It was like a four second video when you take that stuff off. <laughs> anyway, pretty much. <laughs> oh, oh man. Yeah, one other scene I wanted to uh bring up was the fight between Guy and Madara when he unleashed those yes. eight gates. Oh. Cuz ever Thing since of beauty. <laughs> ever since the original Naruto, actually during that Lee fight, we had heard about 
the eight gates, and pretty much most of us wondered what would happen if somebody opened up all eight. Well, Kakashi said you'd die, but, like, what would be the point, then? And in this fight, we finally got to see, like, what happened and what oh, what yeah, emerged. Absolutely, <laughs> man. Because that was just, it was so, it wasn't so much out of the blue, but throughout the entire series, through Naruto and Naruto Shippuden, you you see this whole rivalry between Guy and Kakashi. And it's like, oh, you know, you're my eternal rival and all this other kinds of stuff. And, y- you know, most people are still, you know, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, you know, hey, that's a cool rivalry, but, you know, Kakashi would whoop the snot out of Guy. <laughs> I mean, Kakashi is so awesome, and he has so much, so many tricks in his arsenal. It was just, it was so cool, and he's very versatile. And so, you know, Kakashi has been a favorite of many people for a long time. And then, all of a sudden, <laughs> Madara pops up, Kakashi can't do anything about it, and uh Guy opens up Gate... After gate, after gate, after gate, and he starts, you know, releasing the the blue steam and the pink steam and the chartreuse steam and the, the whatever the green steam, whatever it is. I can't remember all the different colors that he went through. But I mean, when he finally opened up that eighth gate and he was going toe to toe with Madara to the point that Madara even had to give him credit. And he's saying, I've never seen somebody with this level of taijutsu. It was, <laughs> I mean, it was just a thing of beauty, especially if, if, if you get a chance to look at or do some research on what actually happens, why he was causing those colors to come from him and what was actually happening when he opens up those gates and stuff. It's actually really interesting research, but it was such an unexpected moment. And, and I know as we have said before that the battle, the fight itself was good, but just seeing guy open up the eight gates was like jaw dropping. (laughs) <laughs> and, you know, those are the times where you're sitting there watching TV and you get up out of your chair and you're like, no, no way. And you're like rooting on guy as he's putting a beating on, on Madara. It was just, it, it's just awesome. It was a thing of beauty. I thought it was, it was, even though it was false, it was amazing to see that we had, we saw guy open these gates and we had heard that whoever did it would die. And we, while, well, I don't know about you, but while watching it, I knew that guy, like, you have to do this. You have to beat Madara and have it as your final send off. And he didn't end up beating Madara and he didn't die from it. (laughs) Right. Exactly. I mean, that's a, that was like the perfect moment for Naruto to gain the powers that he did, the, the six paths abilities and came and, and healed him. But I think one of the things too that stands out about this, this whole thing, um, is Kakashi's commentary in the background. Because Kakashi's out there watching Guy fight against Madara, and he's going, man, he truly is better than me. <laughs> he's like, we may be, we may be rivals, but you are, you have truly, uh, you know, surpassed me. And, uh, you know, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, there's a, 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 a flashback. To Kakashi and Guy as kids going to the academy and their father standing there talking. And as Guy and his father walk off, Kakashi's father leans down to him and he said, he said, you need to keep an eye on that one because that one, you know, could actually surpass you. And Kakashi was as a kid, he's like, are you kidding me? Really? That guy's, he's a jerk. He's he's a nerd. (laughs) But, uh, at that moment, Kakashi looks and he's like, you know what, Guy, you really have your, you're greater than I am now. And I thought that was kind of cool because, again, everybody secretly is like, maybe not even secretly, maybe openly is like, oh, man, Kakashi's awesome. I don't know why Guy thinks he could, he's even on Kakashi's level. And then at the end, for Kakashi to capitulate and say, you're better. I yield. I bend the knee. That was just, that, that was pretty cool, too. Which makes me wonder, how does somebody, like, know they can open the eighth gate? Because once they do, they die. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and, and if he didn't know that he could and just maybe hoped that he could, believed that he could, willed himself to, and then it didn't happen, <laughs> that would have been a whole different scene. Yeah, that would have been not good. <laughs> I don't even know what the eighth gate's called. It was like, eighth gate of whatever. Oh, crap, it didn't work. 
I think it was called, like, Gate of Death, probably. <laughs> probably. Or ironically, the Gate of Life, maybe, I don't know. But if he opened up, like, the wrong gate, and he was like, Gate of Pooh, open! And he just had to run to the door. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you may have to cut that one right <laughs> <laughs> With that out of the way, uh, I'd like to draw attention to another topic that I figured I'd bring up that what are our thoughts on Boruto and, well, what's going to happen in Boruto and Naruto in the future? Because we know Naruto Shippuden ended, Boruto is still going on right now, but what 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 are they going to do? It's because in the first scene of the first episode and the manga, we see that Boruto is fighting some dude named Kawaki, and apparently, according to Kawaki's words, that he killed Naruto. And oh, I, yeah. I'm not 100% sure that I believe that. I feel like it's it's just something that they wanted to, like, bait us with. So when we actually get to that point, he's not actually going to be dead. He's going to be, like, in a Kamui world or in a Genjutsu or something. And then... Yeah, because if I'm not mistaken, I believe his words were... Um, something like, I'm going to send you to join the seventh. Yeah. I'm going to send you to the same place that I sent the seventh. Right. Which doesn't outright say death, but you kind of, right. you know, implies that. And it also builds a lot of anticipation over however long they stretch out Boruto. This whole time you're thinking, what's going to happen in Naruto? And, and I believe that there was some commentary out, um, a video that was out about, uh, the creators or the writers of Naruto and, and, uh, their plans for revealing that. But I'm not, I'm not positive about that, but hmm. I think it would be, I think that is a great way though, to keep people interested in thinking, Hey, what happened in Naruto? Mm-hmm. I bet I can tell you right now what's going to happen. Uh, you haven't watched too much of Boruto, but I've seen all of it. And Boruto has inherited the talk. No jutsu. <laughs> he's, oh, okay. he's done that with, Two, I believe two different people being Mitsuki and Sumire. I mean, you don't really know who Sumire is, but he was able to, well, turn them good simply with his words. So once we get to this point, I'm 100% certain that Boruto is going to talk no Jutsu Kawaki. <laughs> <laughs> that would be crazy. I killed your father. Yes, but let's talk. <laughs> oh, yes, let us. <laughs> Well, I mean, Naruto, Naruto was able to do it with Ten Tails, Ten Tails Obito, even though, uh, Obito had killed Neji. I, I believe at this point he'd killed Neji. Yeah. And, or th- with the Ten Tails, yeah. And he had already killed, um, the reanimated third Hokage. So, I mean, like, what, what else was there to bring up? Yeah. I don't know. We'll see for sure. Probably. I might, like, I may or may not lose interest after it, because it's kind of, it, from where it is right now, it's entering the Naruto Gaiden part, but it, the whole thing, I'm not going to say the whole thing, but a lot of it feels kind of fillery, even though, like, in the beginning of, in the beginning of Boruto, I actually showed you this picture in episode 7, there was, like, this little, it was a filler episode where Naruto and this guy were having, like, or not Naruto, Boruto and this guy were having, like, a, a complication about this girl. This guy was, like, stalking this girl. And Boruto was like, no, you can't do that and all that. But in it showed the episode 7 of Naruto when Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke were... Naruto, Sasuke, Sakura, and Kakashi were fighting Zabuza. So I thought that's kind of a big, uh, kind of a big jump. I don't think Boruto <laughs> can feel that. All <laughs> right. <laughs> That's all I got so far. <laughs> Man, Naruto, I, I've already said this once, but Naruto's been a trip over all these years. And the thing that really, the thing that really got me for when I was watching like the beginning of Naruto when it first came out was that, uh, well, oh, after all this time, we knew Naruto was like the underdog and he was so determined to make it to the top and that's the thing that and Sasuke is what kept him through all of Naruto and all of Naruto Shippuden that he would never give up and 
I remember when watching that when I was younger, I thought, wow, that's, that's, that's really something. And yeah, I, I, I suppose I could say I, uh, I carried that onto my life as well. I think about there's a, an old expression, no retreat, no surrender. They even had a movie about it a long time ago, but that used to be the, you know, the battle cry of somebody going into a fight or going into a battle or facing some type of insurmountable uh, obstacle. No retreat, no surrender. And that's kind of like what Naruto was doing. Whatever he faced, he didn't back down. He kept his word. He never gave up. Uh, in the final valley, uh, the fight scene between Sasuke and Naruto, actually, that was one of the things he said. He said, I, I never gave up. I'm, I'm, I'm your one, one and only true friend, your only friend, and I'm never going to give up on you. And he constantly said that, you know, um, and I think what was really cool about it, as far as the way that it impacted my life is two things. One, it reminds you that determination and persistence are powerful forces that we can use to overcome so much. I mean, Naruto in the late, you know, in the, at the end of Shippuden and even on to Boruto, um, it was, he was never portrayed as somebody who was just really talented or really, you know, just really powerful. Most people looked at him in the light of what he overcame. As a matter of fact, I think about, um, in, I think it was in the movie, the last, it was either the last or, or no, no, it was in the movie Boruto, actually. Um, when Sasuke came and met with Naruto and everything, and Boruto met Sasuke, and when Naruto got taken, Boruto was talking to Sasuke, and he was like, you know, my father, this and that. And Sasuke says, you don't, what you need to learn is not who your father is now, but you need to know, you know, who your father was and what got him to where he is now the things he had to overcome, the obstacles that he had to face. I think that is the thing that I learned the most from Naruto is that, you know, no matter what you face, no matter what comes in your way and tries to stop you, perseverance, determination, the willpower to move forward can overcome just about anything that we face. We've got to be not so quick to give up, but we be willing to press through, be willing to push forward. Mm-hmm. And Naruto, literally, every fight that he was ever in, because of that, Naruto won. I mean, think about it. Uh, Haku, well, that was kind of the Nine Tails, but he showed compassion towards Haku, and Haku, he, he talked no jutsu to him. <laughs> <laughs> right. And he, he won with, he won with Zabuza, and he beat Neji, the gifted genius, and, by farting. <laughs> no, that was, that was Kiba. Oh, you're right. My fault. It was Kiba. That's right. Neji. I think Neji was the first one he did that underground uppercut yeah. punch thing on. Yeah. The thing in, I remember specifically in that fight, uh, Genma, who was the proctor who had the, the Senbon toothpick, he said, once Naruto won, he said, Naruto knows instinctively that believing in yourself can give you the power to do anything. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, I didn't think a show that was made for like 12 and up could really teach me something like that. (laughs) You know, and one of the things that I want to bring up too is that, and you know this, and you and your brothers as well, uh, I've had many conversations with you guys and many times I've brought up things from Naruto as an illustration for some type of life situation that you may be dealing with or, or some type of advice or counsel that I'm, that I'm trying to give you guys. And all of a sudden, in the back of my mind, some little scene from Naruto will come up, which I know you guys can relate to. <laughs> and so I'll use that scene and say, it's just like in Naruto when, and then bring up that scene. So it's not only what Naruto has taught me, but also lessons that I've been able to pass on to the next generation. <laughs> using lessons from Naruto. Yeah, the same, literally the the same, I've done exactly the same thing. I actually did that the other day. I can't remember what I was thinking about, but it was some, it was something about, like, it was math or something. (laughs) And I remember thinking, it's like, if the Susano did this, then this would also happen. Oh, I remember it. It was that I was trying to see how strong a, um, like, 
you remember that old that old question like how which is heavier like a ton of feathers and a ton of oh uh, right bricks yeah yeah I was I was thinking about that question and I was like it's pretty much it's pretty much like saying uh. Well, I can't remember it now, but <laughs> I just completely blanked after I went to that. <laughs> Gotta be in the moment. <laughs> yeah. Plus, it happened, like, a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> but it had something to do with Naruto. <laughs> <laughs> but I think there there's a lot of good lessons that can be learned from, not only from Naruto, but even even from other characters. I mean, Naruto's talk no juice due to basically is... The, the lessons of, the primary lessons of the show and the responses of people who we talk to. You know, so I think about the whole conversation between Naruto and Nagato after Naruto had defeated all the pains and then went to where Nagato was and that whole conversation. I mean, when you think about it, all these guys, they all wanted to do the same thing. Nagato, what did he want? He wanted peace. What did Jiraiya want? He wanted peace. What did Obito want? He wanted peace. What did Madara want? He wanted peace. He wanted to create a world of peace. They just had bad ways, not Jiraiya, but the other ones had bad ways of going about doing it. And Naruto would go in and say, no, this is the way that you really should see things, and I'm going to see to it, and, you know, instead of fighting against me, you should support me. And basically, Naruto was like the the anime politician. <laughs> Vote for me. And yeah, we vote for Naruto. <laughs> but, uh, but it was also their lessons. I mean, Nagato had a change of heart because of the lessons that he learned from, from Naruto. And I think one of the lessons that we can learn is sometimes we can see things a certain way, but sometimes by seeing them through somebody else's eyes or seeing something in a different light, it can cause us to actually make a change for the better and maybe take on a new paradigm, a new um, world view that can be better for us and the people that are around us. So it's not just what Naruto taught, but also by looking at what the people that he faced, what they learned and how they changed as a result of coming into con- uh, contact with Naruto can also be a lesson in itself to us. Yeah. I'd uh, I'd simply like to point out this fun fact that uh, Naruto was actually based on Goku, or inspired from Goku. <laughs> really? Mm-hmm. I did not know that, but I can so see that. <laughs> Even though Naruto is way better than Dragon Ball Z mm-hmm. or Dragon Ball whatever, I don't care what suffix you put on the end of that. Super, <laughs> Super Z, uh, GT, GT. The original Dragon Ball. Anyway, I know those are fighting words. I'm just not gonna. I'm just not gonna get into that because I'm sure we can have a whole discussion about that. <laughs> if you like Dragon Ball Z over Naruto, leave a comment below. <laughs> well, we've uh, we talked about a lot here, but to really just wrap this up, I wanted to bring up a discussion because I know we had one about what would happen if. Uh, Naruto didn't have the nine tails and fought pain where we didn't resolve that. But <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to bring this up as who would win in a fight between tuning exam Sasuke. So like Sasuke, when he fought, uh, Gara in the tuning exams or Neji. Cause I personally think that Neji would win. <laughs> you know, I had to put really put more thought into this, but I, I almost, I think I would almost have to agree with you because Neji, I mean, at the time, Sasuke was kind of a hothead. He was kind of, you know, I mean, he was good. He was talented, but Neji was also, I, Neji was very intelligent. He was very perceptive and having the Byakugan and being able to see, you know, virtually everywhere around him as well as see chakra points. I think what it would come down to is, especially since at that time, Sasuke's jutsu was very limited as far as compared to how he ended up being. But, uh, I mean, he could do a Shadow Clone. He could do Chidori. Could he even do that? I'm not sure he could make a Shadow Clone. Oh, maybe not. I, I'm not sure. Well, I know he could do a clone. I mean, yeah. he had to just to graduate. But, um, but he could do Chidori 
and he was an you know an excellent fighter. He used the Sharingan and all this other kinds of stuff. So I think actually using the Sharingan alone would give him a, a serious advantage, though. You know what? Now that I think about it, <laughs> I might have to flip scripts here because. Uh, <laughs> Well, I mean, Neji, and de- defense is one of Neji's strong suits and the hand-to-hand combat thing. So I don't think Sasuke could necessarily take Neji in it, except for one thing. In the episode where they showed, it was a Itachi flashback. And it was, they were showing when, uh, Itachi and Shisui had fought against some of the, um, the ninja from the foundation, the Anbu from the foundation. Um, and, uh, Itachi had just, just opened his Sharingan or just developed his Sharingan and they showed him fighting. And as he was fighting, they showed his, so they let you hear his thoughts. And he was talking about how he could see things before it actually happened and like anticipate everything that was going on. Uh, there was this one where this lady used these kunai with these strings attached and she's doing this elaborate, um, you know, these elaborate moves and trying to get him caught up in this big string trap thing. And Itachi saw through all of it, through his sword, and was able to, you know, basically uh, stab through, like, all the kunai and stars and everything that was attached to those strings. And put them all, like, pinned them all into a rock with his sword and standing on the edge of the sword... And he said, I saw through all of your traps. And even when she thought she had them, she was like, oh, you didn't see through all of them. And then did something that would collapse the strings on him. But he had actually changed the trajectory of one of those strings. And and it actually (laughs) caused her to get caught up in it. And she didn't even realize it. And she was, you know, exceptional. She was like the best one at that particular type of fighting style. So, and that was when Itachi had just awakened the Sharingan. So... Using that as a basis to think that Sasuke was able to see things the same way. I think he would have been able to see through the attacks of Neji. But would he have been able to get through Neji's defense? It's almost like the Sharingan gives him an advantage when it comes to defense because it allows you to anticipate your your opponent's moves. But Neji's defense is so strong and almost impenetrable I don't know which one would have come out on top. And on top of that, if Neji had even gotten a few good hits in Sasuke's chakra points, it would have been all over. But then somebody <laughs> could say that if Sasuke had gotten one hit with Chidori <laughs> on Neji, it would have been all over. So, honestly, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, I think it's... I I might be flipping the script, too. Is the fact that uh, Sasuke did have the curse mark. And he was able to, I'm not going to say beat Gara, but able to go toe-to-toe with, like, half-transformed Gara. And Naruto was well, able to beat Neji and so on. So, I don't know. I feel like Sasuke might have had a bit more... Because you remember when he first opened up the, the curse mark when they were in the Forest of Death and just how fast he was? I remember... Right. I remember it was either in like one of the one of the guidebooks or in the Japanese translation that he was uh he was faster than sound at that moment. Hmm. I'm not sure I don't know. About, I'm not sure about the fact against that, but he was he was really fast. But uh I feel like just possibly just that alone might have been that paired with the Sharingan is a bit might be a bit much for Neji. Yeah, but when you think about how quick Neji's hands were when it comes to his defense, I mean, Neji, Neji was a phenomenal taijutsu user, especially the, the Hyuga style of taijutsu, um, and his ability to be able to see 360 degrees. There's basically no sneak attack. And on top of that, the one little sliver that he couldn't see, so it was like 300 and 59 degrees he could see, but there was that one degree that he couldn't. I don't know that Sasuke would have picked up on that in, in a fight. At least the, the tuning level Sasuke. I don't know that he would have been able to, to pick up on that part of it. Hmm. Probably. I mean, Neji, uh, Sasuke during that fight, we gotta remember, is, was faster than, uh, than Lee when he had his weights off. And when Lee took his weights off, even Neji was a little bit afraid of that. 
Uh, that's true. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I, I think that it would be a good fight, but if I had to place money on one or the other, I think I would probably lean more towards Sasuke. I know I said Neji at first, but now that I think it through, I think I'd have to lean more towards Sasuke. Yeah, I said Neji at first, and if I was playing some money, I'd put it in Sasuke. <laughs> yeah, it's like, that just goes to show you. All you have to do is just really talk about something for a while, and it starts to become more and more clear. So, yeah. sorry, Neji. We love you, man. You know you gave your life for Naruto. Appreciate that. But Sasuke would still take you. <laughs> So you're still second rate, buddy. <laughs> and with that discussion over, that brings us to to the end. This was the last of the Naruto videos out of all the ones I've made, out of all like 38 of them that I've made. Uh, this one will bring it to a close. So I'm not, I'm probably never, I'll, I'll probably make reference to Naruto, but I won't make another video. So if you want to save this one or put it into whatever you want to do with it just don't steal it <laughs> you can do you can do whatever but um naruto overall this time has been has been really great to me and both of us it's been really fun it's been really fun making these videos but um i just want to thank all the people who have been over my channel after well the start of this year when i started doing naruto and all the people who have supported me this whole time i just really want to Thank you for giving me that boost, heading more and more to that ten that ten thousand views and heading more and more to all them subscribers to just get me out there and just really see what it has for me. But uh yeah. This has been Beatbox Blade and Beatbox Dad. Think it out of the box. <laughs> Beatbox Blade Dad Dad Blade Beat Dade Box Blade Box Dad whatever. <laughs> Remember to like like, <laughs> comment. Hold on, let's try that again. <laughs> I was expecting you to say comment. <laughs> oh, right, sorry. <laughs> That's how we did it last time. <laughs> My fault. I wasn't even, uh, th even thinking. All right, let's try it again. <laughs> this movie box play, think it out of the box. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. As well as share with your friends if you feel like it. And I will see you whenever the next video is <laughs> next time. So, see you then.